Hello and welcome to this session. In this session, we are looking at a brief overview of the 12 body systems. Remember, this topic will be revisited when you will be handling anatomy 2. But for now, let's just get an overview. So, uh, what is a body system? We are saying that a body system is a group of organs that work together to perform one or more function of the body. There are 12 body systems in the body, starting with the first one, the skeletal system. So the skeletal system is composed of skeleton bones and they are 206 in the body. They are categorized into axial skeletal and appendicular skeletal, where axial skeletal consists of 80 bones, where appendicular skeletal consists of 126 bones with in the due course of, of this training, we'll be able to list all the 80 and the 126. So the axoskeletal consists of bones of the head and the trunk, okay? While the appendicular skeleton consists of bones of the limbs, as well as the supporting pectoral and pelvic guard. The main role of the um, skeletal system is that it's important in, pro support, in providing mechanical support, uh, helps in movement and protection of vital organs, like the rib cage is important in protection of the lungs, the heart, while the cranial bones will be important in protection of the brain. We also have a, a, a skeletal system involved in production of uh, blood cells, especially the rat. The, the red blood cells from the bone marrow. We think that 99 of calcium is stored on the bones and also the bones, the skeletal system has a role in endocrine regulation. Number two is the muscular skeletal and we are saying that we have averagely 600 muscles and we have three main types. We have smooth muscles, cardiac muscles, and skeletal muscles. So smooth muscles will be found in the blood vessels and hollow organs, such as stomach and intestines. Cardiac muscles are referred to as false muscles, but it is fine that these muscles are mainly found in the heart, okay, in the heart muscles. So the skeletal muscles, they are the ones that attach to the bones, okay, and they are the ones that are consciously controlled with exception of muscles like the diaphragm. So the other two muscles are controlled by autonomic nervous stimulation. Cardiac system, the, cardio, the cardiovascular system is composed of the heart and circulatory system of blood vessels, arteries, veins, blood capillaries, you know. So the major function of it is that it's, it's, it's involved in the transportation of oxygen, nutrients, hormones throughout the body, within the blood, and as well as in elimination of carbon dioxide and metabolic waste. The fourth uh, system is the respiratory system, which consists of the upper respiratory system and the lower respiratory system. So you find the upper respiratory system consisting of the nasal cavity and the pharynx, while the remainder uh, uh, forming the lower respiratory system. In terms of function, or physiology classification, we have the conducting uh, zone and the main respiratory zone, okay? So, um, with the exceptions of the alveoli, the function of the function of this respiratory system is to conduct air into the lungs, and then it's aided by these muscles. So, this one makes the conducting zone, and then the alveoli makes part, makes the respiratory zone, which is the site for gaseous exchange. And carbon dioxide is removed when oxygen is returned uh, to, the, to, the, to the blood, okay? So, the major function of the respiratory system is to bring oxygen into the body and expel carbon for oxide. Nervous system, and this nervous system controls how we interact and respond to our environment by controlling the function of organs in other, in other bodies, okay? So the nervous system organs consist of the brain, spinal cord, and sensory organs, and they are connected by neurons, okay? So um, when you look at it morphologically and topographically, 
the, the, the nervous system is uh, divided into the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. But functionally, you find that we have the somatic um, nervous system or voluntary system and the autonom autonom uh, autonomic nervous system. Remember, we should revisit this one as we proceed with our course. The next is digestive system, and the work of the digestive system is to, grade, to, to, to degrade food into smaller and smaller compounds until they are able to be absorbed and used as energy. So it consists of the gastrointestinal tract organs and accessory digestive organs, okay? So uh, you should know that also the accessory digestive organs, they do help in mechanical and the uh, and the chemical food break down, okay? And we have the tongue, we have the salivary glands, the pancreas, the liver, and the gallbladder, which make up the digestive system. The urinary system is number next, and this one we are saying that it's involved in the production and uh, excretion of urine. It consists of the coop, which is kidney, ureters, urinary bladder, and urethra. Okay, it's important to note that kidneys are found uh, behind the peritoneal cavity and that's why we refer to them as retro, retro peritoneal. Okay, the functional unit of the kidneys are the nephrons which normally filter blood and then it goes through the glomerulus. Okay, so the major functions of the renal system is elimination of body waste regulation of blood volume and blood pressure, and regulation of electrolyte and blood pH. The next uh, body system is endocrine system. And they say that the endocrine system is a collection of specialized organs. We call them the endocrine glands, starting with the hypothalamus, pituitary gland, thyroid gland, adrenal gland, several of them, you're going to mention them, yeah? Of importance to us, for uh, to use as an example is the thyroid gland which normally produces triiodothyronine call them the t3 and the t4 and this one they normally regulate metabolism we also have estrogen and progesterone that normally produce uh, regulate menstrual cycle okay so endocrine glands secretes uh, hormones directly into the circulatory system to regulate the function of distant target organs. Lymphatic system is our ninth body system and it's a network of lymphatic vessels that drains excessive tissue fluid that is the lymph from the intercellular fluid compartment and filters is through the lymph node exposes it to lympho lymphocytes like the white BCs of the immune system and returns the fluid into the circulatory system. It will be consisting of the lymph lymphatic plexus, lymphatic vessel, lymph nodes, and lymphoid organs. Its major function is to convey and eliminate toxins, waste from the body, recirculate proteins, and protect the body from microorganisms. Our 10th system is the reproductive system, and it's also referred to as the genital system. Uh, it's important to notice that out of the other systems, this is the only system that is different in the both sexes. Men have different uh, uh, genital system from the, the females, and it's good for us to appreciate. Okay, so we have the we have the we have the external uh, female sex organs, and this one we know we will, will be known as the genitals, and these are organs of the vulva. They include the labia, clitoris, and vaginal opening. The internal sex organs for the female will include the ovaries, fallopian tube, uterus, and the vagina. So the vulva will provide an entry to and protection for the vagina and uterus, as well as proper warmth and moisture, which aids in its sexual and reproductive function. In, in addition, it's important for the sexual arousal and orgasm for the females. So the vagina is a canal leading to the outside body of the cervix of the uterus. Ovaries do secrete hormones and produce egg cells which are transported to the fallopian tube. So the uterus provides protection, nutrition, and waste removal from the developing embryo and fetus. In addition, 
contraction in the muscular wall of the uterus contribute to pushing out of the fetus at the time of birth. What about the external male sex organs? Yes, they include the testes and the penis, while the internal organs include the epididymis, the ductus deferens, and the accessory glands. So functionally, they are grouped into three categories. We have the first category, which is involved in sperm production, and these are the testes and where they are stored, the epididymis. The second category involves the ejaculatory fluid, and uh, the ones that are responsible for the production of this fluid include the ductus deferens and the accessory glands. The accessory glands include the seminal vesicles and the prostate gland. The final category is in those used for copulation and deposition of the sperm. So this will include the penis, the urethra, and the ductus deferens. Our 11th body system is the integumentary system. And you're saying that it's a set of organs that forms the external covering of the body. It includes the skin and the accessories, okay? Skin appendages, sweat glands, and sensory receptors. Skin is the largest organ of the body, we should know, and it consists of the two layers and another underlying layer. So the two layers include the epiderm epidermis and the dermis. Then finally, the hypodermis. So the epidermis is a thick keratinized epithelium made up of multiple layers, five layers, okay? Five layers of the epidermis, okay? Then underneath the epidermis is the dermis, and this is a layer of connective tissue that com uh, contains blood vessels and nerves that supply the skin. So we have an underlying fascia that is not part of the skin, okay? But it's underlying the two layers of the skin, okay? And it's called the hypodermis. It consists of the fat, connective tissue, and skin appendages, such as the hair, nails, sebaceous, and sweat glands. So this will be classified independently from the two layers, okay? So the two layers of the skin are the epidermis and the dermis, okay? So, uh, the integumental system forms a continuous layer that protects the body from various damaging events such as external injuries, loss of water, heat, and carcinogenic effects of ultraviolet rays. It also excretes wastes, okay? It's also be classified under the excretory organs and contains sensory receptors to detect pain, sensation, pressure, temperature, and provides for vitamin D synthesis. The last system is the excretory system, and this is the most forgotten system. A reason why uh, it is uh, partly related to the urinary system. And in the urinary system, we have the major excretory organ being the, the kidneys. However, you understand that there are also other systems that are involved in this bigger system, like the skin from the integumentary system, like the lungs from the respiratory system, like the liver, GUT from the digestive system, and lastly hair and uh, nails from the, from the integumentary system. So you find that the lungs will be involved in uh, removal of carbon dioxide, kidneys, removal of mineral salts, the skin will be involved in removal of several nitrogenous waste products, mainly urea from the deamination of proteins, creatinine from the muscle tissue breakdown, and uric acid from the breakdown of nuclear materials. You also have the kidney, skin, and lungs. They both uh, help in the removal of excess, excess, excess water, okay? Excess water. Then lastly, we have the liver that is involved in the removal of bile pigments from that, uh, that, that, that are gotten from the hemoglobin breakdown and they normally secreted via the, via the, the intestines, okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, those are the different types of body systems. And these body systems will also be revisited when you'll be looking at body system in detail in the second part of this anatomy classes, okay? Thank you so much and that those are the 12 body systems.